morning and this is really gonna be kind of a different sort of video not really a bow video but it is it's not really a video about Valdruna or Helung but it is I'm going to read something and what I'm gonna read makes me think back in school when I had a class that was just devoted to this one author this writer and I didn't appreciate it as much as I should. Now, what I want you to do, I want you to think about what you see before you, the fire, and what it was like before people knew how to control fire. Proto-people. And then it's hard to see, but that is actually a stage beyond the fire. And in the upper right, just above that bench, is Shonigan Spear. Reproduction from a relic um, dated 380,000 to 400,000 years ago before people, proto people, I'm going to say because it was actually Homo, Homo heidelbergensis, um, not modern people, before they had the ability to use um, stone to make stone tools. So they were just sharpened points. And then going on to the left of that, quiver and a bow. Of course, they have, have a quiver and a bow. The drum, which crosses immense distances as far as cultures, geography. And then um, upper left is the prow of a, a, an old boat that I had built. Um, the majority of it, minus the, the bow and stern, received the Viking funeral because, you know, age had it. Sad about that. It was a great boat looking at what's happening in the world today and you can draw your own conclusions as far as how people view things and what people are up to our state of society our state of the world and then projecting back into time the evolution i want you to think of what i'm reading in terms of not a person but in terms of the world as a whole and so they might seem like familiar words, um, but I really want you to listen to the various stages that go along with this. And I appreciate, you know, your patience. All the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts. His acts being seven ages. At first, the infant mewling and puking in the nurse's arms. Then the whining schoolboy with his satchel and shining morning face, creeping like snail unwilling to school. And then the lover, sighing like furnace, with woeful ballad made to his mistress's eyebrow. Then a soldier, full of strange oaths, and bearded like pard, jealous in honor, sudden and quick in quarrel, seeking the bubble reputation even in the cannon's mouth. And then the justice, in fair round belly with good capon line, with eaves severe and beard a formal cut, full of wise saws in modern instances. And so he plays the part. The sixth age shifts into the lean and slippered pantaloon, with spectacles on nose and pouch on side. His youthful hose, well, well saved, a world too wide for his shrunk shank and his big manly voice, turning again towards childish treble. Pipes and whistle in a sound, Last scene of all, that ends a strange, eventful history, is second childishness and mere oblivion. Sans teeth, sans eyes, sans taste, sans everything. Now, I encourage you to find this and read it and think about it in terms of what we have witnessed in the past and what we're seeing today. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to add my own interpretations for this. You all are, 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 are smart, thoughtful people, my mighty viewership. I appreciate you sticking around my fire circle. I'm speaking to you from my leafy teepee. Little sheltered. Think about stuff. Have a great day, everyone.